Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Painting with Mr. Bates. i got some new things going on uh, today. Uh, one, I'm working on using a different camera, so I hope we get a little better audio, so we'll cross our fingers on that. Not sure if this is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial or if we're going to do a sped-up version. Uh, we'll see how it goes after we get done. I've got my 16 by 20 canvas set up and I've got to set up in a portrait uh, format, uh, which means it's straight up and down versus long ways. Uh, portrait format going today. I have applied, let me show you what I've done. Um, in an earlier painting I worked on making a an acrylic version of a liquid white um, basically by mixing some titanium white, some gloss medium, and water. And it worked great. I, I was really impressed with how well it worked. And it, it lasted. I was able to get my entire painting done and get an almost wet on wet style setup. But what I've done is I've actually mixed up another version of an acrylic style uh, liquid white per se for wet on wet. And basically what I did is I bought some gesso, some regular white gesso with the acrylic paint and a slow dry blending medium. This is actually a um, slow dry retardant. It's, it's designed to put in paints. It's like a gel. You put it in, uh, mix it in any of your colors. And it won't change the color. It may give you a little bit of transparency, but it's going to slow down the drying time. So I actually mixed um, the slow dry retardant in with the gesso and then I mixed a little bit of water in that to thin it down just a little bit more and we've uh, put a thin coat over the entire canvas and as of, as of right now it is still wet so it looks like it's working out pretty good for what I want and that's exactly what I want. I've got my brushes laid out um, I've added a new palette knife to my uh, arsenal of tools here. I've uh, added a smaller palette knife. So I have the brushes laid out. We're going to be using uh, mostly our two inch brushes, maybe some one inch fan brushes and maybe a half inch brush and probably I'm going to be using my uh, new two inch round brush to do some shrubbery and some trees. But anyway, we're going to get started and in the meantime the colors will be running across the screen for you here. So we're just going to get going. We'll start in and we're going to go directly in with our two inch brush and we're going to grab some sky blue and I'm not going to tone down the color of my sky blue today. I want to keep it uh, at the blue tone that I have it at. So I'm just going to grab some on my brush and just starting in the top corner here with the X pattern working my way down and just using that same crisscross pattern and as I work my way down it's going to blend in with this bottom coat get lighter as we go down. As we start from the top and work our way down, it's going to get lighter in value as we go down as it blends and mixes with this acrylic version of a liquid white. I'm just going to call it a, um, a thin down just so. And it's working really well so far. Alright, so just go back and forth here. Take out some of the brush strokes. Alright, now we're going to clean this brush really quick. I'm not done with that color. Give it a shake. And just beat it dry. Alright, we're going to go in and I'm going to use my fan brush this time. I'll take my fan brush and I'm going to go straight into the titanium white. And I'm 
going to decide where I want some clouds to live at today. So I think I'm going to start maybe right up here around the top and just using the corner of the brush and just just a circular motion, just kind of swirling in some some basic cloud shapes. And we've got some little small ones, just little floaters down in here. And getting a good dry, a completely dry, two inch brush and just just using the top corner. Just using the same same circular patterns and then just lightly hair on that one. Knock off some of that excess paint. And I was trying to get that loose hair off there. And kind of broke that cloud up. That's okay. I can go back in. We can just kind of go over it a little bit more. Is that will actually kind of layer this a little bit. Just like so. There we go. Right, we can get some of that excess paint off. We're going to wash our fan brush. I think we're going to have maybe a small mountain somewhere in this and then we're going to start working further down into our scene down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and let me show you this right here. I'm, I'm touching this and it's still a little, a little damp but not where I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it another quick spritz with the water just to kind of reactivate that slow drying gel all right all right now we're going to work on adding in our mountain scene and to do that I'm going to use my palette knife just as we have before Use my palette knife. I'm going to go into the Rain's Grape, a little bit of the titanium white. Just going to mix that up. And spread it out across and get a good roll of paint on my knife. Now guys again working with the acrylic paints is not the same as working with your oil paints. Um, so if you're going to use a palette knife for doing things like this you need to get a good uh, heavy body paint or just basically just kind of a thick paint that's going to have that consistency of the oil paints uh, but you're still not going to have that exact same consistency. So in order to get that um, that feeling, you need a good, heavy acrylic paint to do this with. And you need to keep your canvas moist 
one way or the other, whether you're using a slow dry uh, medium to add to a base coat or whether you add a slow dry medium to your paint. The thing about it is if you add that slow dry medium to your paint, you're going to get more of a liquid consistency, which means you're probably going to have problems using a palette knife. But that doesn't mean that you can't still do some great mountain scenes. You can do those with a brush. A uh, palette knife just works really well because you're able to get those breaks uh, when you go in and you add snow or soil or anything like that to get those effects in there. So the palette knife I like because you can do that. But that doesn't mean if you need, to, if, if necessarily, that you have to add a slow dry medium. You can do so and still get the same effects by using a brush. So there's nothing wrong, you can use a brush. And a lot of people would prefer to use a brush versus a palette knife anyway. So once again, we're gonna take our palette knife, we're gonna go in and we're gonna decide where our mountain is going to live today. And I think we're gonna put our mountain, maybe our mountain's gonna live, maybe, oh, why not, right there. So we're just gonna start off that had that nice little marbling effect in it so it worked out pretty good okay I'm gonna grab a little bit of paper towel here I'll wipe off the old palette knife And we're going to grab our two inch brush, get one that's good and dry. I want a good dry two inch brush for this. We're going to grab our two inch brush and just starting, just starting with, the, with one side and you want to follow the angles. And we're just going to pull that down just like so. Just remember, follow the angles. See that you're having a little bit of problem pulling the paint. You can lightly, just a light spritz with the water will help. Give it a second to kind of kind of feed into the paint. You want to give it just a moment to get fed into the paint there, let it blend in, and then just go right back. And as you can see, it's pulling right down just the way that I'd like for it to do. All right. Yeah, not so much worried about if any excess paint gets down here because we're gonna come in and we're gonna lay in uh, a lot of our ground features and what we're gonna do. I think what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go with maybe another waterfall scene and that's my that's my intentions as another waterfall scene so what we're going to do is I think we're going to have possibly maybe a little stream coming down from the mountain maybe from this side over here or from this side not really sure yet we're going to have maybe a little stream coming down um, we're going to lay in our land features have a little stream coming down and go from there um, then we're going to have our waterfall to come in it's going to drop down into a basin area into this section here. So we're going to get started on that. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to clean these well, two, a couple of brushes here. I'm going to clean off the spot on my palette. We'll be right back right after this quick message 
uh, regarding some books that I've written. So take a listen to this and be sure to visit my Facebook page for my author section for books and take a listen to that and also be sure to go down below and subscribe to this channel and don't forget about my Facebook page for the painting uh, the artworks fun uh, you can check out that page as well subscribe below and take a quick listen on this information regarding some paintings or rather some books that I have recently written and one that I'm working on so take a listen to that and see what you like and I'll be right back right after that and I'm gonna go take care of this clean this palette get things set up and come back and when we get back we'll be working right on this so we'll be right back right after this Dennis Bates here for uh, Cody's Treasure Cove. Uh, the series is ready. I've got book one and book two up and ready to go right here on this Facebook page. Uh, so be sure to give it a like, share this page with your friends, let everyone know about it. Book one, Treasures Beneath, and book two, Mysteries from the Past, are both ready for order. We've got several in stock. Uh, ready to order so if you want some autographed copies from this page you need to order them directly from here you need to click on the shop link uh, there there is a button at the top of the page if you're using a computer uh, the button at the top of the page it says shop or shop now click on that and it will take you directly to the shop or if you just scroll through you'll find a link for the shop in there uh, make sure you're ordering directly from my page in order to get the copies directly from me there are also links that goes to my printing company, uh, Create Space, who handles my printing. Uh, you can order directly from them as well. However, those copies will be direct print on demand, which means they're going to come directly from the printer to you. Uh, so you won't have the opportunity unless you can get with me uh, to get some autographs. So if you want the autograph copies, you need to order directly from this page. So just a little quick brief uh, information here. Cody's Treasure Cove is a series uh, that we started. Uh, it's a two book series right now. We've got book number three in the making uh, that should take us into the completion of that series. I'm not sure yet how that's going to go. Uh, it depends. Book three may be the ending or we may move on in and, and have even more in the series. But right now book three looks like it's going to be the last part of this series. But Cody's Treasure Cove starts us out with a young nine-year-old boy in book number one who happens to be autistic and has a love for dinosaurs, fossils, history, anything that has to do with, um, really has anything to do with finding old stuff. Uh, he enjoys what he does. He gets out, he digs up his yard, he digs up his dad's yard, just makes a mess of it, um, gets out there, and eventually he finds a surprise and that leads into a great story line that goes in and takes us on into book number two. Book number one is he and his friend. They're out tearing up the yard, digging up holes, and just having a good time looking for that treasure that he's trying to find, looking for that fossil, looking for that one little relic that he might hope to find. And if you want to know what he finds, you got to get the book. Book number one, Treasures Beneath, is ready to go. This one came out back around Christmas. Already sold a few copies of it. If you want to get your copy, you need to order directly from me. If you want to have that autographed copy, you need to order directly from this Facebook page in order to get it. Um, book number two, uh, the journey continues on. This one is Mysteries from the Past. Uh, Cody gains a new friend in this book, and their digging continues, and their hunting continues. They just go on this uh, wild adventure. Things turn out great. They find a forgotten trail deep in the woods on the land. Um, find a cavern. And you'll just, you, to find out where you're going to get into it. And uh, they run into a lot of historical finds on this. So book number two is a great book. Um, follows along book number one. You need to get both books, okay? Book number one, book number two. You get them directly from this page. You're going to get them for $4.99 plus tax. Shipping, if you want me to mail it to you. Shipping, uh, of course, is $3, $3 per book for shipping. 
uh, for USPS, uh, and I promise you when I package these books up, they are packaged to where you're going to receive them in good condition. They're not going to be damaged. You're not going to have to worry about uh, what it's going to look like because when I package them, I make sure that they are packaged, they're well wrapped, and uh, not only did I put, do I put them in a bubble wrap uh, container, I also wrap the books in a cardboard uh, poster board backing to get a good stiff protection of the covers. So if you order them by mail from me, you're going to be assured that they're going to be protected and you're going to get them in great condition. Um, there's also the option for uh, shipping on there to where you can arrange for uh, to get them directly from me to either come pick them up or for me to meet you somewhere and hand deliver those and that is a free option. So if you don't want to have to pay shipping and you're local, that is a great option to check into as well. Uh, you can send me a message on there if you want more information on the book. Again, uh, they are available right here on my page. Um, I'm going to be updating the stock very shortly. I'm also working on a website, and that link has been added into the information, into the About section on this page. Uh, the website is dlbates.webs.com. That's dlbates.webs.com. That link is in the About section, so check it out. Um, my updated email address, uh, which is author.d Bates at gmail.com is author.dbates at gmail.com. You'll find all that information on um, popping up at the bottom of the screen here. You can also, if you want to order the books and print on demand, you can order them directly from my printer, which is Create Space. That is the print company that I'm using. You can order them directly from them. They are also available, guys, on Amazon, not just here in America, but they are on available now on Amazon Europe. That's right, guys. You can get them. Um, through Amazon Europe, and you can order them directly there as well. So be sure to check them out and order them. If, uh, from For some of my friends who are in the UK, you can order them directly from Amazon Europe, get them there, and they'll be sent out on print-on-demand through Amazon. Uh, Amazon Prime members, of course, get free shipping. Book 1 and Book 2, uh, right here, Book 1, Treasures Beneath, Book 2, Mysteries from the Past, Guys, get your copies today. You need to check them out. Uh, spring is just right around the corner for me. I'll be out of work very soon uh, for spring break. And then summer break's coming up shortly. I'm going to get out. My son and I hopefully go out, which is Cody, who is my inspiration for these books. And he is the inspiration for my lead character. Uh, he and I will be hopefully going out uh, sometime around spring and summer to go out and actually do some meet and greets and set up a table to where we'll be doing some signed copies there where you can meet the author. You'll be able to meet both myself and my son. So check it out. Order your copies now. Get them quickly because they're going to start going fast. And one more thing I'm working on. Like I said, book three is coming along. But one more thing that I've got going on, you need to check this out, is a self-help guide on autism. Like I said, the lead character in the book, based after my son, the lead character in the book is autistic, okay? So this is a great book for families of autism, families who have autistic children. This is a great book. You need to get it. You need to order your copy now, okay? But a new book that I have, and you can check it out. It's already the information. It's already here on my page. You can check it out. That book is called Autism and Me. Um, it is a self-help guide. It's not a very long book. It's just, uh, just a very short book. A very small, short book, kind of like a little uh, um, booklet, a little guide. Uh, but it gives you some information, some resource links, and some great information on autism. And links to where you can get more information uh, as far as like what the autism speaks, uh, autism talk. Uh, some links to areas here in the state of Georgia to where you can get help. So you need to check that one out as well. That one I hope to have. It's already been sent to my publisher. I am working right now on getting that one on the final edits, getting it out. Hopefully it will be available within the next week, maybe two weeks. Um, just as soon as I give the okay and, and tell my printer to print that I'm, uh, I'm approving it, I'm uh, satisfied with it. And as soon as I say print, it will go into immediate production, ready to go. So that one should be available within the next, possibly the next few days. It depends. I'm waiting on an email now 
uh, to let me know they're sending me my uh, my proof copy of that one. So as soon as it comes in, it will be available to go. Book one, book two are available right now. Get your copies before they get gone. I just got in a fresh stock of both book one and book two. A fresh stock just came in. I've got copies available right now. So if you want to get your autographed copies, you need to click on that shop link. Order your copy now. Send me a message. Let me know you want a book. I will set some aside. We will plan a schedule to get it to you. I will get you the information. If you can't find the link, send me a message, and I will send that link directly to you. Order your copies now. Treasures Beneath Mysteries from the Past. The Cody's Treasure Code series available right now. Order your copies now. Don't let them get out of your hands. This is a great opportunity. If you have children on the spectrum, I urge you, order your copies right now. They will enjoy it. They will love it. If you've got a child who loves dinosaurs, who loves histories, you need to get a copy of this book. Book one and book two. You need to get them both. Order your copies now. Don't let this opportunity slip past you. I look forward to hearing from you very soon. Click on the link. Shop now. You will find that link on my page. I will also... Uh, there's also links again to my Create Space e-stores. You can check those out. They are available on Amazon for my friends in the UK. Be sure to uh, visit uh, your Amazon links there. And type in the search bar, Cody's Treasure Code. Uh, right here, Cody's Treasure Code. You don't even have to put in the subtitle. Just put in Cody's Treasure Code, and it will pull up both of these books. Now, keep in mind, it may pull up a third version, a, a second version of this one here. I have since changed my publisher from when this originally came out. So there's going to be one version that's going to pop up that's not going to show availability of Prime. Uh, that is still available by some secondary bookstores who do have it in stock of the original version. Um, there is a revised version that is now on the market. It's the same book. It's just a revised version. When I say revised version, I just mean that the ISBN number, which is this number on the back of the book, is has really been the only thing that's changed and that's because i changed my publisher from my original publishing company so that's the only difference so when you go on look for the one that is available on amazon prime and that will be the current edition that's ready to go you can order that for direct print on demand through amazon that's for my friends in the uk be sure to order your copies as well uh, for my friends across the united states if you want to order from amazon you can order there and you can also click on my uh, shop link here order directly from me no matter where you're at in the u.s i will ship it to you and again i will make sure that these books are packaged well to where they're going to come to you safe and sound and they're going to look just like this they're going to be in great condition they're not going to be all bent up uh, guys these are not very long books and i did that on purpose the reason i did this into a series instead of doing it into one huge novel the reason I broke it down into a series is because I want to push it towards the younger readers um, and push out, try to reach out to some of my readers who may be on the spectrum. And I know that sometimes reading the very long books uh, can become tiresome for them. So I broke this into a series of shorter books that makes it great for young readers that can get in there. And it's, it's got some good reading to it. Um, check it out. Order your copy now. Um, give me a like on this. Be sure to share my page. Be sure to share this page with all of your friends. And let's get it out there. Let's reach a 1,000 likes by the end of spring. That would be great. That would be awesome. Let's reach a 1,000 likes by the end of spring. And then by the end of summer, I'd love to see those let that likes reaching up into the upper thousands into the 2000 range i'd love to see that happening and it can happen with you my friends sharing this page and order your copy today don't delay order it today don't delay all right i look forward to hearing from you very soon enjoy your reading for those of you that have ordered and for those of you that haven't ordered don't delay order your copy today
All right, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that uh, little infomercial there that I threw in for Cody's Treasure Cove. So be sure to check that out. And be sure to check out a uh, Facebook page for the paintings as well. I'll show you what I did during the break. I went ahead and I laid in just some just some background greenery with some some trees way off in the distance. And most of that's going to be hid uh, later on as we add into this. Now, I've added in, and I went ahead and laid in just a, a little bit of a stream area coming down from the mountain area. So a little bit of stream area dropping into a multitude of waterfalls. Now, I just had an idea, and I really liked what I came up with, so I'm going to come in from this side right here. We're going to have two streams coming in. This one here is going to come in, and it's going to just right here. It's just going to drop right down into this same fall area right here. Just, just a little stream coming in and straight down. And as that water begins to fall down and it hits maybe a little section of rocks here, it moves down and it drops on down. And it's right here, maybe even right there in the middle. Throw in those sounds there. Sound effects always are fun. And then it's going to fall right down into our water area down here, a nice little lake. All right, now what I'm going to do is now I want to come in and I want to fill in all of my ground area. I want to get some ground effects before I put too much water. This was just a rough idea to give me an idea of what I wanted, how I wanted it to go. So I can change this. We're at still at a point where I can change this. If I don't like it, I can change it because I can layer in more colors, darker colors on top to blend it in. But I wanted to lay this out. I wanted to get an idea of what can I do? Where, how can I make this look even, um, even better? More than just a simple waterfall. So we're going to work with this. We're going to go right here. I'm going to take this fan brush and I'm going to place it over here. Go ahead and clean this one. I'll use that later for some trees. Start with a dark background when you're doing something like this. And actually be able to come in then and add your brighter colors on top. You're not going to use as much paint. And the rate that I'm going here, I'm actually using a lot of my paints here. Which is fine. I mean, it, it works either way. It's just more work in doing this. So if you can pre-treat your canvas ahead of time, if you uh, come into it and you know exactly what you're going to be doing, then you can, it would be much easier to come in there then with that dark background and start building up your layers. Then you won't use as much paint. I'm going to grab some more of that phthalo green, touch more of the burnt sienna, and some more of the bright green. And I'm just mixing it on the brush. And I got a lot of things going on the brush. By mixing it on the brush, I'm able to get all of those colors just kind of going in there. So when I start laying this out, I'm not coming in with just one color. I'm actually getting all of those colors. I'm working on right now mixing in some uh, some lighter blue is when I go back and work on the fall. I've worked on adding in my moss features and uh, a few little like vines uh, falling down over our cliff area and went in and added some more color to the section up here. We're going to come in now we're going to go ahead and work on our water. Now coming down the stream here I kind of want it to be a little a little bit more detailed but then as I get into the into the actual waterfall I want to see some breaks in this because as it's falling you know I might be hitting some rocks or whatever in that area so I want to see some breaks in this now, as I said as we come into this I'll also come back in I'll take a little bit of titanium white work on this a little bit as well. Alright. Use 
titanium white for some highlight. Now we'll come back over. Well, naturally, I'm hitting my greenery here, but that's okay because when I come back and add in some more of my land features, we'll fix that. And again, just drop it down. It's okay if there's some breaks in it. land right here on that little edge. You know what? I think we're going to just take it right on off the canvas. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I like that. Right on off the canvas. So we've got this, maybe this big branch coming in right here. All right, we're going to load up a little bit more of the color here. Grab some more of that titanium white. And let's just, oh, let's see. Right here. Yeah, right, right, right here. Again, coming off the canvas. It's just one big branch coming off. Load up our brush and again into the titanium white. Double loading allows me to get that that texture going in there. So maybe we got maybe right here. Just like that. Just like that. There we go. Oh, what the heck. Maybe it's got a little friend over here on the other side. Maybe it's got a friend living over here on the other side. Oh, let's see. Maybe. Maybe right here. Right here. Coming off the, again, coming off the edge of the canvas. Yeah, just like that. Just got a little friend living right here. I'll take it on up a little bit. Just like that. There we go. just tap just like this and you can already see the brush is doing the work for me it's just doing it it is we're absolutely working wonderful so you can already see that the brush is doing most of the work just with the phthalo green and guys the reason I'm going with just a, just phthalo green right now is because I want to put that that dark background on there and then come back and add some highlights all right and that's it that's that's all I want to do I don't want to go heavy with it I want to go just about like that so now I'm going to go to this side over here we're going to load up the brush again with some of the yellow green and we're going to come over here and the same thing just just tap the brush will do the work for you I'm very, very pleased with this brush, just with what I've had right now. Probably the best investment that I've done so far with any of my artwork supplies. So again, guys, if you if you can, I would suggest you try to get you some good quality brushes. And like I say, the Bob Ross um, products work out really great and guys I'm just kind of loading up the the tip of my brush I'm not sure you can really see that too well but basically we're just getting kind of a almost a good sharp chiseled edge onto the brush all right then I just go right in and just just tap 
tap it in, and again, let the brush do the work for you. Just mix it all on the brush. All right, now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get brave. And I'm going to decide what I want. Do I want to have more land feature up in this area? Do I want to leave it the way it is? Do I want to add trees or what? But I think I'm going to go right here. Right along the side of the fall here, and just just give the indication here of some soil, some some ground cover up under here. All right, do the same thing on this side here. Not too much worry about this right here because the tree's covering that, so I can't see it. All right, so just like that. And I'm just going to kind of just take it on down. All right, this side here. Just going to kind of tap in some color here. All right. Now, I'm going to wash this brush. some highlights to it in a few moments. And yeah, we'll come over here. Why not? We'll just tap in a few right in here. All right. Now we're going to go up here. Get a little bit of that bright green. I'm not going to touch that area right there yet because we're going to add in more of our mossy green into that. Just like so. Alright. I want to come in here. I need I need to fix something that I just saw. Let me find my fan brush. And I need to grab a little bit of this burnt sienna. I'm just going to go right here. And I'm going to take some of this titanium white. Double load the brush again. And I got a little carried away here. My shrubbery went over, but that's okay. We can fix that. And 
this color is a little bit lighter, but that's okay. We'll just call that some highlighting. Get a touch of that, touch more of that titanium white in there. We'll put a touch of the range gray in it. this brush real quick. Then I'm going to go back in right here and just, just tap. I'm going to give a little bit of highlight to these bushes. I've got a stray hair here. I can get that off. My son just finished up his painting. Pull it around. There you go. He's getting really good with his mountains here. Really good with those. I love his birds. He's getting good with those. He's getting good with his water. And he's starting to learn how to do the trees with the double loadings. So I look for his trees before long with those double loads to start getting a, a lot more detail to those as well. So he's getting really good at these. So, all right. All right, we're going to finish up here, and uh, again, I'm going to just just highlighting in with the bushes. vines just kind of overhanging we've got some ivy or something like that it's just kind of just kind of overhanging into the water. I'm going to touch on this tree just a little bit. I'll give it a little bit more, a little bit more color, a little bit more highlight. Same thing with these back here. All right. Now I'm about to do something I've never done before. We're going to do a little silhouette. It's going to be hard to see. And I'm going to squat down here so I can get in. You can't hardly see it. But just a little silhouette of a squirrel sitting on the tree limb there. And oh, maybe, maybe there's one. Maybe there's another one right here. Just a little silhouette. There's that big old fluffy tail. Let's get his tail going a little bit more. There we go. Just a little silhouette. You really can't really make it out. But just a little silhouette. Maybe a little squirrel sitting there on the tree limb. Uh, maybe they're getting ready to jump over into there. Or maybe they're on the other side. Maybe that's a hollowed out tree and that's their home. Alright, but I think we're going to call this painting finished. It's not one of my more popular, in my opinion, of the waterfall features, but it'll work. I'm going to do this right here. Though. I'm going to grab a little bit of this bright green and just using the liner brush here, I'm just going to kind of just doctor up the spot right here. There we go. All right. All right, let's grab that same color that we use for the birds. It's already nice and liquidy. You know what, I'm actually going to just 
wipe off that brush. All right, let's get the brush nice and wet. And let's grab some of that bright yellow, that, that lemon yellow. And again, let's get the brush good and wet. And let's come down here and give it a signature. Decided to use the yellow so that a signature doesn't really override the colors here so that yellow is going to kind of blend in but the signature is still there all right so we're going to call this painting finished i think we're going to call this one oh i think we're going to call this one the mossy falls all right so we're just going to leave it at this we've got uh we've got our two trees here coming off the side i think i am doing really quickly let me grab i want to grab some of that yellow that i just used and the bright green going back into the oval brush just get myself a nice bright green color here I want to highlight I'll put a little bit more highlight on this tree here probably on both of them just to make it stand out a little more against the background there we go yeah yeah I like that There we go. All right, let's do this side over here. Can't forget this one. There we go. All right, now we're going to call this one finished. That's nice. All right, we're going to call this one finished. And again, like I said earlier, waterfalls are uh, kind of my... Achilles heel. Uh, it's something I'm still working with. Um, still struggling a little bit with the waterfalls, but I'm coming along with them, okay? Don't be afraid to try it. Don't be afraid to get in there and attempt it. Um, there's no failure in it. Uh, it's still a great painting. Still looks great. Um, the trees, I'm really loving this new oval brush. And everything, it works great. And again, if you're going to get into things like this, you need to get some good high quality brushes. Uh, you want to use some high quality brushes and some high quality paints. Uh, he's went back and he's added some more into his. Let's see here, he's added some more into his. And a lot of times you do that. You come back and, and you look back at it and you think, oh, you know, hey, I should have done this. I should have added that. And you know what? Go for it. Add it. If you see something that you like, add it. Alright? Give this brush a good, good Bob Ross beating. Alright. And again, get you some good quality brushes. You don't have to get you don't you don't have to get the same brand that I got. This was just uh, this is actually the only uh, brand of this particular round or excuse me oval brush that my local art supply store had so that's the reason I got this one um, but you do want to keep them in good condition that means making sure that you keep them clean clean them after each use uh, give them a good drying and everything so and he's still adding to his uh, give it a good drying and everything and keep them in good condition uh, get you a brush conditioner. Uh, just it's just basically a little little conditioner that you can purchase that you can dip your brushes into and actually shape them back into the shape you want them to be. So good quality tools is a it is really a must if you're gonna if you're gonna get into doing painting. If you're gonna do acrylics, uh, need to work with. If you want to do the wet on wet technique which is my favorite, but you don't have to. But if you want to do the wet on wet technique, then while you're still working with the paint being wet, you're going to have to use some type of, a, of an additive, um, whether you use, such as I did in a previous video, of uh, mixing a gloss medium, water, and say um, a titanium white for a base coat, 
to give you a nice wet surface to paint on or whether you're just using just a spray bottle of water it works just as well but you need to keep that surface moist in order to keep that wet on wet uh, painting technique going and you need to work quickly if you're using acrylics you don't have to work super fast but you need to work kind of quickly if you're going to be using acrylics in order to maintain that wet uh, painting technique that, that wet on wet you're going to have to use uh, work kind of quickly to keep that paint wet while you're using it or add an additive to it such as a retarder and the retarder basically just is exactly what it does it slows it down it slows down the drying time of that paint so you can add a um, a retarder um, additive to it or you could add you could add water you, you could actually add a little bit of water to it the only problem is if you start adding water or adding a lot of additives to it you're going to risk losing that heavy body consistency to where your paint actually will stand up and if you're going to do it in these styles to where you're going to want the texture you're going to want to be able to work with it especially using a palette knife you're going to want to have that heavy body consistency so all right so get out there let your imaginations flow think about what you want to do think about where, where you want to go with your paintings don't be afraid to try something new and don't consider it a failure every painting is going to be unique and it's going to be your style so i hope you've enjoyed this particular one i'm going to call this one the mossy falls hope you've enjoyed this one again thank you for joining me here with painting from painting with mr bates and as always allow your imaginations to flow freely across your canvas